I believe that we are the connected generation. I'm going to spend the next few minutes with you to confirm that. It's, a, it's some thoughts and some ideas that have inspired me, and I hope they're going to inspire you. So let's crack on. There are seven billion people on the planet. 50% of these are under the age of 30. They've never known life without the internet. What's really interesting to me, there's six billion mobiles. Out of that six billion mobile, there's one billion of them are smartphones. A billion smartphones. What's also intriguing is that 57% of people rather speak to people digitally than analog. So picking up the telephone and calling somebody is cliche. In fact, if you were to call my desk phone in New York City today, it forwards to a florist in London. I'm one of that 57%. What's also interesting is 48% of us who have a smartphone have actually bought something. Intriguing. What's really intriguing for me is there are two billion people connected to the internet, and 70% of those people online like to read blogs. Interesting. Things have changed since I grew up in Australia. This is the country I'm from. I grew up in that house, in that town. I'm one of 10 kids, that's me on the left. Sweet 17, I'd never been kissed. What's really interesting <laughs> is that at that age, that was when freedom and independence and self-expression was part of it. Minimoke indeed, my friend, my first car. So when I was able to buy a car, that's when I was able to actually have that freedom and expression. Today, kids are born connected. There's something about them that's sort of ridiculous. There's a switch that came on, and we sort of sometimes wonder whether we can turn it off. This is the world of the doer. What's really, really interesting in my mind is that work and leisure have now blended together to this thing called life, and it's all the same, and we should enjoy that, no doubt. How did we get here? Well, it all started in this fragmentation world of portals, blogs, aggregators, and feeds, and the rise of the mighty social network. The social network, my friend, is not new. It's been around for many years, but I don't care about the brands, I care about the themes. These are going to be consistent over the time that we look at social. Conversation, connectedness, openness, community, conversations, participation. This is all we care about when it comes to social. We very quickly move from the information age to the social age. This is the image of the moment for me. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Indeed. You've all seen this posted to your social accounts. This sums up what's going on in social right now. I love the bottom one. I'm good at peeing. Awesome. <laughs> all right. We are just one click away from our personal most inner thoughts. That's the world that we're in today. This idea of self-publishing that consumers are now publishers. I love that. Personal expression is the new form of entertainment. That's what social has really taught us. Mm. What do we do online? We consume and share content the ways that you expect it to. We consume a lot of content. Half the time we share it, half the time we consume it. That's all we're doing online nowadays. However, for brands, it's been a land grab for likes. I think likes is a rubbish concept. Back in the day, before you and I could communicate, we would have to confirm my friend request. That was the skin in the game. Today, you can like my shoes, my belt, my pants, my, my bag before you like me as a whole. So we're going to see all these new verbs come out. So that's going to be in change as well. But who's winning in the liking space? Well, it's food, entertainment, and restaurants. Why? Because they already shop there, they love special deals, and they like to be treated like VIPs. So treat them like VIPs. Intriguing. This is social brilliant. The country of Sweden said, you know what? If you're proud to be Sweden, why don't you actually own the Twitter account, the official country account for a week? Love it. This is social brilliant. This is Burberry that said, while mountains of people are following us on Twitter over London Fashion Week, why don't we do something special for them? So what did they do? They took photographs of the models and tweeted it out before the likes of Anna Winter got to see them. That's the sort of stuff we're looking for. Sandy, I mean, I live in New York City. My wife and I were victims of this. But what we've seen is the grown-up social. We all rushed to the television, the newspaper, the radio. As the lights went out, we rushed to social. Social kept us informed with family, with close friends, and kept the network of social closed and kept it really unique for us. Digital behaviors have also changed. We have been in the game of entertainment and information for a very long time. The new new is utility, or as I'm calling it, just be useful. Because if you're useful in a brand, then people will actually participate in your brand more often. Please stop calling this thing the second or third screen. It's clearly the first screen. Nobody walks in here today with a television. So it's really important to understand that this is the future of where we're going, and this is how you should be interacting with people, in my mind. Right, why? If you're thinking about building an app and they will come, those days are well over. It's no longer 2007, fewer apps being downloaded, but people are paying more for them. So it's really important to think about the way that you actually 
uh, express when it comes to consumers online. We love location. We love mobile for three reasons. As marketeers, we are aware of what they're doing in the context of what they're doing it in, and we also love the fact there's all this new data. It's data soaked, and there's all sorts of new data that we don't even know how we're going to express and how we're actually going to report that today. But it's a beautiful environment to think about in the future, indeed. You thought the utopian moment of the last 18 months was going to be a term called solo mo, social, local, mobile. Well, the reality is it's homo. <laughs> I could have had a lot more fun with this slide. 68% of your mobile mo minutes are actually spent in the home, so we're doing a lot of mobile mobility in the home with multiple devices. It leads me to this: we've gone from a lean back to a lean in to a lean back. What is that? 25 years we've been sitting on the sofa like this, boink, 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 a remote control at the TV. Lean in is over the desktop, over the keyboard, humped over our backs. That's the lean in. Lean back is we're back on the sofa, still pointing a remote control at the TV, but now we have a 10-inch something burning a hole in our crutch. That's the lean back culture I'm talking about. All right, is it important? Yes, they spend more money than smartphone users. They spend more money than desktop users. This category has only been around for a couple of years. They tend to convert higher, so they actually spend actually higher value. They love it. There's something about that 10-inch. Women rule the world, brothers and sisters, no doubt. But where men actually have a higher penetration than women today is actually in tablet use. Can I get away with that? Here's the point: men are actually on top in terms of mobile spend. Finally, we're on top of something. Rocking. Here's the deal: when people have a tablet in their hands, it has a higher, they have a higher appreciation. There's a dif differentiation in the way that they look at value. So people who have, carry a three-inch device versus a ten-inch device, there's a higher difference of appreciation. That's very worthy to think about. Augmented reality. I think it's the pants. I think augmented reality is going to be the future. Here's an example of it. Extremely powerful tool, but if you need more convincing, check this out. <laughs> so, awesome. You can see the power of where that's going to go for us. Band-Aid did a limited edition Muppets recently. When you, tap, when you wipe over your tablet device, it actually came to life, and you're able to play around with the Muppets, and kids were able to interact directly with their favorite characters. Toyota recently realized that kids like to be the backseat driver. So to enable that, Toyota built an app that allowed kids to drive the contours of the road that their parents are driving, but in their language. So it's in cartoon. This is the sort of ca the captions we're talking about when it comes to mobile. People discovery. This is interesting. We sort of think we're tapped out in apps in terms of, of checking in and being able to actually find out where you are digitally. But there are actually apps now that allow you to find out people who you identify with, who are now are leaning into a location that you are at. But that's not enough. We want to be able to use that to actually introduce ourselves. We、so、use it as an icebreaker. In the real world, we wouldn't call it people discovery. We'd call it stalking. But in the reality of digital, it seems like something we can utilize. However, I do think that it's completely overwhelming at the moment. There's lots of media coming out. It's social is doing all of this. Television is still hitting us with a lot of context, and then it becomes underwhelming because we can't find what we're looking for. Search doesn't do what it used to do. So I think there's actually too many friends. We're probably following too many people. We have too many followers. There's too much noise. We have mass confusion out there as consumers, and I think that defriend and unfollow will be a trend. <laughs> But don't be afraid of this because the goodness of this is the reality is if you can do that, attention is the new currency. It's not click-through rate. What we want is dwell time. We want people to pay attention to our brand whenever we interact with them. So that's the currency that we're looking for in the future. That currency will be delivered in great storytelling. That storytelling is going to come from content of curating. So these curations of conversations are going to be done by brand and done by great consumers who can can build those storytelling. That's what we're talking about moving forward. We're going to see ads that are going to be harmonious, meaning they're going to be very contextual to the environment that you're in. They're not going to look like ads that you see today. They're going to be very environmental, which I think will be very beautiful to see. How's it going to be delivered? It's going to be delivered through conversations, not campaigns and not chatter. That's not the world we're going to live in. But brands that are remarkable, reactive, and relevant are going to win in this game, in my mind.、Mm. It has to be authentic, and it needs to be active, and that engagement needs to be really authentic. That's all we really care about for consumers. We're going to see ads that have video, apps, commerce, 
and social embedded in them. So stay with me here for a second. I think the banner, I think the banner ad and the advertising strategy that we've been spending millions of dollars on to get one click away to a destination is going to change because you'll be able to embed all of that context inside the ad today. So instead of going outside in, you'll go inside out. Your message and your interaction will be in the context of people reading the content and the ad in that context with them. That's what I'm talking about in the future of ads. Awesome. Our job as marketeers is to build liquid content that fuels conversations, connections, and engagement. That's our whole utopian moment. OK, what else is hot? There's some other things that I think are amazing. We are moving away from the information age, as I said, to the social age, but we're very quickly moving to the context age, or interest. So we're really going to see niche sites blow up, and we're going to see curated nicheness, meaning we want to have better experiences delivered to us in neat packages that allow us to feel like we're discovering those without feeling like we're having to go out and collect all of those. And that's going to be delivered by niche going mainstream. That's sites today blowing up to be big sites. And we're going to see big sites come back down and act humble. So we're going to see mainstream go niche. That's the collective universe that I believe we're moving to. We're going to see the internet of things, or seamless things as I call it, embedded in our day-to-day -day lives. Don't think about it as dedicated to screens. It's going to be off-site devices. The ability to put my phone against my car and it for to open my car doors. Here's a designer, Nick, uh, Richard Nickel, who actually designed a bag that has an iPhone charger in it, but there's no reason that can't be a Wi-Fi hub. So the Internet of Things is not necessarily device-driven, it's going to be mobility-driven. Participation today is limited to text, really, typing. And I think in the future it's going to be video, audio, photos, and it's going to happen in real time. So those of us walking around with a smartphone can participate in real time. That's the future of participation. And don't think about online, offline anymore. In my mind, I think we need to think about awake and asleep. Because we're always on, we know that's the case. Don't think about social as a place you go, think about it as a thing you do, just like water and electricity today. It's an active. And I also think about three worlds. There's my world, my private world, or my own personal world. There's our world, which is my social world. And there's the global world, which is their world. They're the three worlds that I think about the context of where we're headed. And also, if we get it right, if we don't get it right, it's going to smell like this, though. Amazon affiliates meets Twitter meets multi-level marketing is this whole idea of social commerce. It'll be a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend in social design. <laughs> it's our job not to screw it up. We have to make it far more authentic. And also, there are three colors. I'm an old artist that make up every painting in the universe. It's red, it's blue, it's yellow. With that, you can paint whatever you like. With you, my friends, here are the three colors for you. It's technology, it's content, and distribution. With those three colors, you can paint any digital execution that you want. That's sort of the rounding of what I think the universe looks like moving forward. I saw this cover recently by The New Yorker this year, and it made me realize primarily that although we are a connected generation, crazy, right? Although we are a connected generation, I don't necessarily think we are a connection generation. So I think the next phase we'll go to is using the internet to make us more human, because all this device and all this digital somehow makes us feel alone. So the next generation I think we're going to move to is the connection generation. And thank you so much, brothers and sisters, for your time. <laughs>